Hi everyone and welcome to our next Tech Tree video. Today we're taking a look at the French. They weren't in the beta so this is all new stuff for the channel. They're considered an easy difficulty to play or one star difficulty much like the English. The reason for this I think is that they are very similar to the Age of Empire 2 civilizations. They're pretty straightforward, there aren't too many branches going off in random directions. They're very aggressive and this is because of their early cavalry. They're also very cavalry based and they have a strong economy. The reason I think they have a strong economy specifically listed here is much like the English because it's quite straightforward, very much like a standard Age of Empire civilization. The French deploy powerful cavalry units and can boost production in fortified positions. Enemies must be prepared to withstand charges of powerful royal knights and other armoured units. They specialise in mounted combat. Battle with improved cavalry units wielding more powerful weaponry and technologies. There you have a mainland economy where you wield superior economy with cheaper resource drop-offs, economic technologies and more versatile traders. They have a productive front line. Maintain offensives with keeps that reduce the cost of units produced from archery ranges and stables within their influence. Note that barracks are not included in that. Civilization bonuses as a whole, they get faster villager and scout production per age, starting with 10% in the Dark Age, then 15, then 20, and then 20 again. Economic technology is 30% cheaper. Resource drop-off buildings cost 25 wood less than other civilizations, and trade posts are revealed on the minimap at the start of the game, so you don't have to search them out. That also includes the trade posts that are on islands on the water maps, where they are more of a dock than they are a normal trade post. Traders can return any resource to the market, so rather than being limited to just gold, if you're wanting another resource in particular, then you can bring that back rather than having to trade for it. Trade ships also return 20% more gold and can be further given a bonus by one of the landmarks. Influence is important for the French. Units produced from an archery range or stable within the influence of a keep are 20% cheaper. That's quite a nice discount when you think how much things like the knights cost. Their unique units are the Royal Knight, the French replacement for the standard knight, and they gain a bonus damage for three seconds after completing a charge maneuver. You will also get some other bonuses which apply to them through unique technologies. There is also the Abaltrier, which is basically their replacement for a crossbowman. They deploy a defensive pervase that provides 5 additional ranged armor for 30 seconds. It's basically a massive shield that they put in front of them and then fire over the top of. They also get the advantage of additional melee armor. Galileus is a large war galley that has a long range forward mounted bombard cannon. This is what they get in the castle age and in the feudal age they get early access to the hulk with a ballista which we'll talk more about when we get to the dock. So moving on to the actual tech tree itself. First you have in the dark age the town center which gives your villager scout and textiles nothing special there. You get your house, you get your mill as standard with the usual upgrades, you get your lumber camp again with the usual upgrades, and the mining camp with the usual upgrades. Those main upgrades are the ones which give you 15% improved resource gather rate. Then you get your farm again as standard, and now we move on to the barracks. There is nothing special here for the French, they get the spearmen in the dark age and feudal age, and then get access to the manor arms at the castle age and onwards. In the dock is where we start to see some different stuff for the French. In the Dark Age they get their fishing boat and transport ship like everybody else. And then in the Feudal Age they get their trade ship, but they also get their hulk. They get their broadside ballista ship earlier than any other civilization. This is a massive bonus on water maps. These are slow ships, but they absolutely wreck arrow ships. It even says they're strong against arrow ships, and everyone else is starting with those, so you can imagine how powerful the French can be on a water map. Then in the Castle Age they get the Galleus, which is their unique ship with the Bombard Cannon, very similar to the cannon ship from Age of Empires 2. You get your access to the Demolition Ship, and then a Karak the Warship with broadside cannons in the Imperial Age. Technologies wise you get your standard fishing upgrades, you get special unique technologies of the French, the long guns, which increases the damage of naval cannons only by 10%. 
you get your Navigator Lookout, additional sails, armoured hull, extra ballista, the chaser cannons and explosives as with the other civilizations. You also get your normal palisade wall, gate and outpost. The outpost has your pretty standard upgrades, a choice of arrow slit, spring mold or cannon emplacement and the option to fortify the outpost into a stone tower. Then we move on to our first set of landmarks. The first is the Chamber of Commerce. This acts like a market and allows all traders and trade ships on the map to return an additional 30% more resources to any market or dock. This is a huge bonus if you are building for the long game. It might not be very beneficial if your game's going to last 20 or 30 minutes, but anything longer than that, you're going to see some massive returns if you're planning to do trading. Also remember that for the French, this doesn't just apply to gold, you can select other resources. All that's available there is the trader as usual. Then you have the choice of the School of Cavalry. This is basically a stable, but it allows all of your stables to produce units 20% faster. So if you're in it for a shorter game and you want to be very aggressive, perhaps this is the one for you. You have the option of building your scout, horseman and royal knight straight away in the feudal age. They're obviously not cheap, but they are very strong. You also get a unique upgrade for those royal knights, which gives them the ability to regenerate one health every second when out of combat, which makes them fantastic for early game raids. You run in, you do a bit of damage, you run away, not much is going to catch up with you then unless they have horsemen as well. Then in the castle age, you get cantled saddles, which again is unique to the French and increases the Royal Knight's bonus damage after a charge by plus 10. And once again, we talk about these numbers, plus two, plus three, plus four, these all seem like small numbers, but in Age of Empires terms, they are big. So well worth doing as an upgrade, it's not even that expensive. Moving on to the Feudal Age itself, you obviously have the town centre with your villager scout and textiles, nothing special there. You get access to your market again with the trader. Then we move on to the blacksmith. Now there's nothing huge to mention here, other than just a reminder that these technologies are free. All of the melee damage technologies are free for each time you age up. You do not have to pay for these. The French get them for free. You get steel arrows and the range damage upgrades. You get all of the melee defense upgrades and all of the range defense upgrades. You also get siege engineering and the military academy. You also get the battering ram and siege tower after you've done the relevant upgrade. And then we move on to the archery range, which is where we see our next special unit. So we get the Archer in the Feudal Age, but then in the Castle Age, we get access to the Arabaltrie. These are replacements for the Crossbowmen. They have more armor than the normal Crossbowmen, and they have the ability to place down a shield to give them that extra defense against incoming ranged fire. Very good for when you're facing off against other archery units. They also get an upgrade in the Castle Age, which is unique to the French, which increases the Arbaltrier melee armor by plus five. Again, just in case they're going to get attacked by horses or indeed men at arms, it just gives them that little bit extra defense to try and get out of the way. You also get access to the Hand Cannoneer in the Imperial Age and the additional research crossbow stirrups, which reduces the reload time of the Arbaltriers by 25%. Then you get access to the stable, which again gives us, as we saw in the landmark, scout, horseman and royal knight with those two upgrades. You get your stone walls, your stone wall gate and your stone wall tower, nothing special to mention there. Then we move on to our next set of landmarks. The first is the Royal Institute. This houses all unique technologies for the French. Research is 20% cheaper here and it ignores age requirements. So when you build this and go to the castle age, you can do all the upgrades that would actually be for the imperial age, namely enlistment incentives, which improves the French influence by reducing the unit cost by a further 10%. Royal bloodlines, which increases the health of all cavalry by 35%, a replacement for the normal bloodlines technology. And you also get access to the other ones we have mentioned there. 
The other building you can choose from is the Guild Hall. This generates and stores resources over time. The more resources stored, the faster they are generated. You can select between wood, food, stone, or gold. Obviously, this is stored resources. So if you spend all the resources, then it's no longer stored and the rate it produces will obviously go down. So this again is for the long game rather than the short game. Once you're in the castle age, you get access to your keep with your usual upgrades, a spring old emplacement or cannon emplacement, or indeed both. You can do the boiling oil upgrade, or you can then research enlistment incentives if you haven't taken the Royal Institute option. You also get access to the monastery, which gives you your normal monk, herbal medicine, piety and tithe barns. Moving on to the siege workshop, we also get our other unique unit for the French here. You get Spring Old Manganel and Counterweight Trebuchet, but you also then in the Imperial Age get access to the cannon. This, unlike a Bombard cannon, is permanently unpacked and goes around on wheels, which means that it doesn't have a pack and unpack time. It can fire immediately. Excellent against buildings or any stubborn targets. You'll see a lot of these out in the field, though they are not cheap. The Reboloquin is, once again, our organ-style gun, which can hit multiple targets in a single volley, very good against infantry. We get greased axles, roller shutter triggers, adjustable crossbars, and siege works, much like the other civilizations, nothing special here. On to the final set of landmarks. The first is the Red Palace. This acts as a keep and features high damage Arblast emplacements. Each garrison unit adds an additional Arblast. These are basically our crossbowman replacements sat inside the towers. And obviously standard keep upgrades, nothing special there. The other option is the College of Artillery. This is perhaps a bit more interesting. It provides immediate access to produce royal artillery which do 20% more damage compared to normal artillery. The other thing to look at here, other than your access to the Royal Cannon and Royal Reboloquin, is that this also gives you access to the Culverin. This is a long-range cannon made for destroying siege equipment. You don't otherwise get this weapon. This is at the College of Artillery only, so you have to do this building, or this landmark, to get access to that gun. And it usually kills other siege units in one hit, so it's well worth picking up. Then in the Imperial Age you get access to your university, you get the usual chemistry upgrade, geometry, you get royal bloodlines instead of standard bloodlines which we've already discussed, incendiary arrows, court architects and elite army tactics. And then finally you get Notre Dame as your wonder. Well that's the end of the French tech tree, a fairly straightforward tech tree compared to some of the civilizations. I have really enjoyed playing as them so far, I've played them in quite a few matches now, both in land combat, which is quite good for raiding, as I say, with the Royal Knights, and also on some water maps, because those hulks are just devastating in the Feudal Age. I highly recommend them to anyone who's just starting out, as much with the English, they are pretty straightforward to play and get a hang of. Well, I hope this was helpful. Please do like, share and subscribe as always, and please stay tuned to the channel for more videos on Age of Empires 4. Thanks very much for watching everyone, I hope you all have a great week.